Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of amazing individuals from around the world. We are now in season four with over 1,300 recordings, which are being viewed and heard around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm privileged to welcome a very accomplished professional and author, and all of you know I'm partial to authors, Mr. Ian Ziskin from New York, USA. Ian, welcome to the show. Great to be with you, Ashutosh. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Um, Ian is the president of Exec Excel Group, LLC. He's an author of a book titled The Secret Source for Leading Transformational Change. And he's also an author of three other books. So today, Ian, uh, we're going to speak about your latest book, The Secret Source for Leading Transformational Change. So let me start by asking you, tell me about your book and your motivation to write it. Well, as the name implies, uh, most of the focus is on dealing with the challenges of leading large-scale transformational change. Mm -hmm. uh, I think impetus for the book really began uh, a couple of years ago, as many of us were locked in our homes dealing with uh, the combined effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. you know, I was observing not only, of course, the uh, health-related challenges that people around the world were dealing with as a result of COVID, but also the uh, economic disruption and uncertainty, uh, people in the workplace attempting to figure out almost overnight how to uh, work remotely uh, mm -hmm. when that was not a model that a lot of people had been previously used to. Same thing with schools. Right. Right. Uh, and children attending school, and even some of the political division that was taking place, certainly in the United States, but mm -hmm. I think many places around the world uh, during this period as well. And it, it got me thinking about uh, what does it actually take for people to survive uh, and even thrive during mm -hmm. periods of large scale transformational change. Mm -hmm. That was the original driver, uh, complemented by uh, at least one other thing, which is right. I happened to um, lead a consortium of uh, independent coaches and mm -hmm. consultants, many of whom are quite interested in and expert in the topic of leading transformational change. Mm -hmm. And so uh, whatever approach we were going to take to this book, I was hoping that it would be a highly collaborative diverse set of perspectives yeah. that we could use to address the topic. Very interesting. And, you know, uh, Ian, many, many people have written about change and, and transformation. Um, how are you different and what is your specific hypothesis that you want to share with our viewers and listeners? Yes, thanks for the question, Ashutosh. I, I think that uh, there may be a couple of distinctions mm -hmm. in the approach that we've taken to the book. So I'll address that first and then yeah. a little bit of the, the content. The approach, uh, I've become fond of describing the book as 200 voices in under 200 pages. Wow. Uh, and the reason why that became important to us right. was this concept of diverse thinking and multiple lenses mm. through which you could view leading transformational change. So we have quite a few contributing authors who've written essays or done uh, write-ups mm -hmm. uh, interviews with senior level leaders who mm -hmm. themselves have uh, successfully led mm -hmm. transformational changes. And that provides a wonderful window into a wide variety of different you know, ways of approaching the topic. I mm -hmm. uh, also used a, a survey where we had uh, well over 150 people contribute their perspective. Mm. And so for me, one of the most important outcomes of the book was this not be a book on change that's only Ian's perspective, you know, mm. as author, mm. that we have the, the input of, of a couple of hundred people. Um, and then uh, the other aspect of the book, which turned out to be fairly important, mm. is this concept that uh, people really don't read books the way they used to anymore. Okay. So even talking okay. to publishers, as I'm sure you know from having written uh, your many books, the idea of 350 or 400 page books mm. uh, 
more and more difficult for busy people to work their way through. Right. And so we try to be brief. Very interesting. Concise, Very focused, and practical. Uh, and hence, you know, getting it all done in under 200 pages. Now, mm -hmm. the, the premise for the book really is all about the idea of uh, answering essentially a few questions. You know, mm -hmm. one is, what is it that tends to make uh, leaders who are highly successful at transformational change mm -hmm. uh, be that successful? Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, uh, why do we so often fail uh, to successfully lead transformational change? You know, what right. tends to get in the way? Mm -hmm. uh, and a third premise, which is perhaps more of a hypothesis, which was the belief that all transformation is change, mm -hmm. but is all change transformational? And it turns mm -hmm. out uh, perhaps, perhaps not. So those are some of the original uh, founding principles upon which we began to pull the book together. Amazing, amazing. And and you know, writing a book itself is a is a hard task. You uh, brought in thirty five contributing authors. How was that experience in being able to put together so many different people with so many different thoughts into one book? Well, the, the challenge, to be honest, is was a little bit of a cat herding exercise, as I like to call it, mm -hmm. uh, because you're dealing with, you know, very accomplished, experienced people right. all of whom have strong points of view about the topic. Mm -hmm. So there was a little bit of uh, organizing required to make that happen. But uh, the beauty of the experience, in my opinion, has been these very diverse, sometimes conflicting, but more often uh, mutually reinforcing points of view that build on one another. Right. Uh, sometimes, as you know, in writing a book, you don't know necessarily what you're going to come out with mm. until you get through the process of writing it. Mm. But I've been very uh, excited and pleased by the fact that there is enough commonality and common threads and common themes mm. that have emerged from the book, and we can talk about some of those. Mm. But at the same time, uh, people have been able to express their individual perspective and point of view based on their extensive experience in leading transformational change. I think it makes it a richer contribution for the reader. Fascinating. And would you now like to talk about some of the common uh, threads that you got from so many different people? Yeah, sure. H happy to do that. I, maybe I'll touch on a few mm -hmm. examples and then see uh, what additional questions you might have mm. about so one of the, um, the the premises of the book, given the title, The Secret Sauce for Leading Transformational Change, is that there actually is a secret sauce that begins to emerge, you know, a, a handful of things that are fairly common. Hmm. Uh, one area that I'll begin with, because it actually uh, is touched upon in the foreword of the book mm -hmm. uh, by one of our contributors. This is a gentleman by the name of Ron Sugar, mm -hmm. uh, who was... Uh, the CEO of Northrop Grumman uh, mm -hmm. when I was there as the chief HR yep. officer, somebody I've worked with and for for many years and a, a fabulous leader, but also mm -hmm. a fabulous person. Mm. One of the things that Ron talks about in the foreword of the book, which he's mm -hmm. kind of right, mm -hmm. is this idea of start with truth, talent, and timing. Yeah. And I, I emphasize that as a place to begin mm -hmm some of the common themes because the, the first element in particular, truth, turns out to be foundational. Uh, this is really all about defining reality, mm -hmm. understanding the situation that you're in. Basically, we are where we are mm -hmm. and the circumstances are what they are. And uh, human beings have this amazing capacity mm -hmm. to deny or dismiss or deflect yeah. data or facts Correct. that don't necessarily reinforce their preferred view well said, yep. internal or external mm -hmm. environment. And so having the capacity both as an individual as well as organizationally mm -hmm. to understand and face the truth so that you know what you have to deal with mm -hmm. in driving Very interesting. transformational change turns out to be an essential element. Mm. Uh, a couple of other elements that mm -hmm. Ron Sugar touches on in, in the forward that I think are relevant here are the areas of talent and timing. So in yeah. the case of talent, what we're really finding there 
uh, reinforced throughout the book is the importance of surrounding yourself mm -hmm. with really good people who are going to help you drive and execute on the change because mm -hmm. quite frankly rarely even the most effective leaders are they going to right. do it on their own mm -hmm. uh, and timing turns out to be really important as well for the following reason uh, very rarely will you uh, talk to leaders who've gone through a big transformational change mm. have them tell you i wish i'd moved more slowly you know typically what they'll say is i moved too slowly mm. uh, i should have moved out faster yeah. changes that i know needed to be done mm. so the concept of timing is really moving at a pace yeah that's faster than what you would typically feel comfortable with because that's necessary to get traction uh, and to make the kind of progress that, that people would uh, would expect. So uh, that's just you know one major element of the, the secret sauce, if you will. I'll stop there for a second. Very interesting, very interesting. And you know, yet when you, uh, very early in the book, you talk about your father's illness and his demise. How did that experience affect you and what role did it play in influencing your point of view in the book? Well, for uh, someone like me at that age, you know, I was uh, 11 years old when my father was uh, eventually diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, especially in those years. Mm -hmm. That was a an illness that was extremely difficult to diagnose and to uh, treat. And so over the course of a couple of years, um, he ended up uh, improving and uh, getting worse and improving and getting worse uh, till eventually a couple of years later, when I was 13, uh, he was just under the age of 47 at the time, he passed away. Now, obviously, anybody who's been through that type of experience of yeah. losing a loved one knows the, the difficulty and the, the yeah. challenge uh, of dealing with something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and in my case, you know, I, th I think back to it uh, many, many years later. Mm -hmm. uh, last year was the 50th anniversary of his of his death, and I often think about, you know, going through difficult circumstances like that, but also trying to think about how to turn uh, lemons into lemonade, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, what what positive could come from going through that type of difficult experience? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And understanding, you know, how to come through it on the other side, uh, being a better person for going through that experience. Now, the reason that all translates to uh, the idea of leading transformational change mm -hmm. was even in those days, many years ago, mm -hmm. uh, it occurred to me this this concept of answering the question from what to what mm -hmm. really became important. Uh, not only in life, dealing with the tragedy like mm. uh, a parent's death, mm. but also in leading transformational change in yourself or in uh, a team or, or, or an organization. And the reason is as follows. Mm. Most people and organizations have this tendency to focus on, you know, what are we going to be? How much better are we going to be when mm. sometimes in the future we make the change? Mm quite often uh, skipping over the past uh, and the place that we're coming from mm. and the things that got us here that were actually fairly successful and what needs to be preserved so that we do not throw out the baby with the bathwater mm. in the process. And that's a common mistake I see being made yeah. over and over again is that organizations mm. do not answer the question mm. from what to what uh, as they go about their journey uh, for transformational change, but it's a, a value that became extremely important to me personally over 50 years ago when I went through this experience of my mm -hmm. father's death. And that's why I included the story. Wow. wow. Well, thank you, uh, Ian, for sharing such a personal story with me uh, and all my viewers and listeners. I'm grateful that you shared this. Moving on, you know, your book also includes a list of seven competing priorities or paradoxes that must be mastered. Can you help me understand uh, some of these with a few examples? Yes, yeah, let me, I'll give you a couple of examples of, of what I ended up calling in the book, the beauty of end, mm -hmm. uh, in recognition of the fact that quite often we are, as you mentioned, dealing with a series of paradoxes and competing priorities that mm -hmm. somehow have to be blended together and 
addressed. Here's one example, the connection between facts and feelings. Mm -hmm. So I think we all know that, you know, both at the individual level as well as at the organizational level, uh, many times we're relying on facts or data mm -hmm. to help substantiate and legitimize the need for large scale transformational change. Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes we appeal almost too much to the right. idea of logic, right? We have facts that tell us we need to change, uh, but feelings turn out to be important too. One of the examples I use in the book to illustrate this point is the idea of many people around the world coming to the conclusion that they'd like to lose some weight. Mm -hmm. you know, step on the scale and staring back at them is this data that tells them that they probably could afford to lose uh, a bit of weight. Mm -hmm. Now, most people logically understand that the path to doing so successfully mm -hmm. is usually some combination of diet mm -hmm. and exercise. Yeah. However, standing on the scale, looking at the data by itself will not help you lose weight. You actually have to internalize what needs to be done. It's a little bit of what's in your head and, and probably even more so what's in your heart mm -hmm. uh, and decide do you feel the need and do you feel motivated mm. to take the actions required to lose the weight and uh, dealing with transformational change, whether it's at the uh, individual or the team or the organization or even societal mm -hmm. level uh, is very much the same way. We stare mm. at the data, the data will not drive change. Our actions and our willingness mm. and how we feel about the, uh, the impetus to do it will in fact uh, drive change. Mm. Uh, and that's why it's important to reconcile those two uh, areas. One yeah. other example I'll offer mm -hmm. just, uh, you know, complete the thought yeah. is the combination of two competing priorities of speed mm -hmm. rhythm. Mm -hmm. So we were talking a few minutes ago about yeah. this idea of, you know, moving faster than feels comfortable. Mm -hmm. and the importance of speed in leading transformational change. And that's absolutely true and it comes up over and over again uh, in our book. However, uh, I would also say that if you're going to bring other people along with you, mm -hmm. speed alone is not sufficient. Mm -hmm. And here's what I mean by that. Very interesting. A bit of, Very. Um, of guitar mm -hmm. and I just know a bit about uh, music. I'm sure many others know quite mm -hmm. a bit more about it than me, but one of the things that you discover if you talk to musicians is very rarely will a musician say to you that the song is improved mm -hmm. simply by playing it faster and getting to the end more quickly. Uh -huh. uh, it's also about you know having the pace and the rhythms uh, and the harmony and people playing off the same sheet of music mm -hmm. and building off one another as they as they make beautiful music. Mm -hmm. That really is what success in music is all about. And transformational change, I think, is very much the same. Speed without rhythm is basically noise. Mm -hmm. Speed Maybe and that's... rhythm uh, creates uh, beautiful music, but it also makes for very successful, large-scale transformational change. And that's why... Uh, that Wonderful. set of competing priorities so, is so important to reconcile. And I... And I, and I uh understand what you're saying because I play the the, the Indian flute and uh, I can tell you how important music is uh, in all our lives. So thank you. Uh, I've got time for a couple of more questions. My next question is that the punchline of your book seems to be the chapter, The Secret Sauce, which describes 10 ingredients for successfully leading transformational change. Uh, what are a few of these ingredients? We, we discussed one already a minute ago, which was this idea of starting with the, the truth, talent, and timing. Correct. So Correct. Dwell any more on that one. Uh, but a couple of others that might be of interest to your listeners uh, go something like this. Um, one of the things that came up over and over again uh, was this idea of go first. Mm. but not alone. You know, mm. I think uh, successful transformational change is oftentimes started mm. uh, and driven by leaders uh, mm. and what they do. However, 
there are very, very few examples of mm. successful change uh, done by a singular individual. So the importance of surrounding yourself with others, uh, transforming yourself before you expect to change other people, mm. setting a good example, being a good role model, mm. but also uh, I'm fond of saying from our experience mm. in the book, uh, leaders of transformational change travel in packs. You know, they do it together with other people. So that was a very important yeah. uh, element of secret sauce that came up over and over. Another mm -hmm. would be the importance of define, align, and refine mm -hmm. the what and why, right? So having mission clarity about what it is we're trying to achieve, having alignment in terms of accountability and measures of success mm -hmm. and, and holding people accountable for the things that they say they are going to do to contribute mm -hmm. to the uh, change. And the idea of uh, refining, meaning uh, assume, because it's usually part of the experience, mm -hmm. you're going to have to make constant adjustments along the way mm -hmm. rather than putting a plan in place and following it blindly and ignoring all of the other uh, elements that mm -hmm. cause you to refine things along the way. You should assume mm -hmm. that refinement uh, along the way is going to be uh, essential. And then maybe one other element of the secret sauce mm -hmm. I'll offer now, uh, given uh, our time constraints, is what we ended up calling love influencers mm -hmm. and resistors. Uh, and here's what I mean by that. Uh, you know, most leaders of change will mm -hmm. tend to gravitate toward people mm -hmm who are highly influential in the organization and have a way of persuading other people right. that change is necessary. Mm -hmm. But we also have this tendency to say, you know, I want to surround myself with people who share the same vision that I do, mm -hmm. who I can trust and count mm -hmm. on to support the change. Mm -hmm. That all makes complete sense. Mm -hmm. However, there's also this other element of what you might think of as resistors in the organization who are extremely valuable, important. These mm. are people who tend to be a little bit more skeptical uh, and may be willing to push back mm. or ask difficult questions or challenge some of the assumptions that are being made about the, the need for transformational change or mm. the, the action steps that are being used. Yeah. Sometimes those individuals tend to be uh, marginalized, mm. pushed out of the organization because they're viewed as naysayers mm. or non-supporters of the change. But in reality, uh, they can very often be instrumental mm. in the organization to up its game in terms of understanding the challenges that need mm. to be overcome. Fascinating. And that's why we talk about the importance of loving mm. both the influencers yeah. who, who help move the, uh, the change along, but mm. also sisters who are asking some of the tough but necessary and important questions that have to be addressed along the way. Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, Ian, my last question to you, um, and uh, I'm going to start by saying transformation for most human beings is tough. Most of us prefer status quo or status quo ante. You know, we, want, we don't want to make a change. My question to you is, Given that you have written such an amazing book on transformational change, what do you want your readers and the thousands of my viewers and listeners to take away from your book, The Secret Source for Leading Transformational Change? Well, I'll probably focus on one specific thing that was mm -hmm. a big aha yeah. for me. Mm -hmm. now, Weaver, you know, as an author, uh, as I'm sure you do as well, that uh, when you write a book, hopefully you can teach people something that they didn't already know. But I'm also a big believer that you should learn something yourself hmm. from from writing the book. And hmm. I learned more than one thing in writing this book. And one of the big learnings for me was the recognition that always in the area of transformational change, there's this debate over do people really hate change or do they embrace change? You know, mm -hmm. and as you were just describing, yeah. uh, often people do resist change. Mm -hmm. My conclusion uh, as, as an individual in writing the book is that most people actually do hate change. 
And, uh, and I'm not proud to admit that, but I think it's actually true. Mm. However, what I also learned was that as much as people hate change, they hate failure even more. Uh, and so if you, if you can appeal to the sense of the individual's need and desire to win mm -hmm. uh, and to be part of a successful uh, enterprise, if you're looking at it from the organizational perspective or to be in a, a team that's highly effective, mm -hmm. uh, having fun, but also driving results mm -hmm. or even at a societal level, you know, to live a life in a place uh, that they can be proud of mm. the, the desire to win uh, and the hate of failure mm. uh, actually can be more motivating than almost anything else in driving transformational change. And so the takeaway from my perspective is for anybody who's listening, focus on what it takes to win, you know, mm. for the individual, for the team that you're part of, and for the organization that you're part of, yeah. that will help overcome some of the inevitable obstacles to and resistance of the difficult things that you have to do in leading transformational change. Wonderful, wonderful. Ian, on that note, uh, thank you so much for speaking to me. Thank you for talking to me at such length about your book, The Secret Sauce for Leading Transformational Change. Thank you for giving me those amazing stories uh, and examples of Ron Sugar. And uh, thank you for also talking to me about so many different aspects of transformation and how you have put together this amazing book. I will ask all my viewers and listeners to go and check out your book on Amazon. And I will go and check it out myself and then take a call. Finally, thank you again, Ian, for speaking to me and good luck to you. Great to be with you, Ashutosh. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you for listening to The Brand Called You videocast and podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website, www.tbcy.in, to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for The Brand Called You.